Life worth living and retirement worth having is about the people in our lives. It's about what we do. It's about what we say. It's about how we feel about ourselves. It's about who we are. It's about what we need to know. And it's really about how we handle our life. It's about what we do in terms of impacting other people's lives, for sure. When we look at people's lives, we have to look at who they are. We look at them on the outside. We pay attention to their clothing. We look at their fashion. But the truth is, fashions change. Some fashions return, unfortunately, and some people just never do anything about their fashion. They stay in the same old fashion regardless of what's going on. They keep the same hairstyles. They keep the same clothing, and they don't make any changes at all. They some sort of sort of time themselves out of society in a way because it's more than evident that they're not with it with people. In my case, I like to wear different type of clothing. I like to wear different clothes type of clothing because it produces different types of results as a journalist. It allows me to understand what is and isn't going on in the world with regard to how people judge people in a matter of seconds. Some people automatically uh, presume that I'm homeless, and that was based on what I was wearing in clothing before. I've since gotten rid of some of those clothing and changed my style, and just by changing a sweatshirt, I found that someone asked me if I was a fisherman. That was sort of comical because I do like to fish. I actually love to fish, I just haven't been able to go in a while, and I do have a fishing license that probably needs to be renewed. But openly, that's okay, and if I talk about my private stuff, it means some idiot is going to go out there and try to monkey around with my rights in that way, I'm sure, because that's what people do, right? I mean, we're out there to harm people, isn't that right? We're out there to destroy their life, we're out there to shave them up and clean them up and do things in a way that makes us feel good, but really harms the life of other people. You see, in life, we have moments of time to see who people are underneath their clothing, right? I mean, that's what we do, isn't it? We boyer in on their lives. We peer into their cameras at like the Kardashian home or other places, and they literally walk around in skimpy things. So I thought today I'd play that card. I'm going to show you the fact that I have a furry face and I have a furry body, which I sort of like, but someone has sort of shaved me, which I don't appreciate. I don't like the fact that someone thought they had the right to remove my clothes without my permission, without my consent, and do things to me. But openly, that is my right to give that opinion, to render that establishment of my life, that I have the rights over my body. I have the rights over my body, I have the rights over who I share my body with. I have the right to tell people, listen, if this happens, don't allow a lot of people around. I have the right to tell that to the people that I care about the most, the people that I love the most, the people that I want to share myself with. If I go swimming, I literally have to remove the clothing to do so. I have to put on bathing trunks just like everyone else, and I literally have to be willing to share that aspect of my life with the world. That's what swimming parks do, is they reveal a lot more of our bodies than other people are really regularly used to seeing. But we also know how to handle those situations. We don't do a lot of gawking. We don't do a lot of staring. My brother, on the other hand, makes a comment on just about everybody who walks by who's of the female persuasion, but that's him. That's not me. I was raised a little differently. I was with my father a little longer than him, and frankly, I'm glad for that. But openly, I'm talking about the reality of life, that in life, when we get busy, we sort of produce a result, and that result comes about in a lot of loving ways. Now, when I talk about these things, I'm talking about things moralistically. I'm talking about things ethically. I'm talking about things intellectually. I'm talking about things spiritually, and I'm certainly talking about things soulfully. The body is just a part of that intimate condition. It is not necessarily good, bad, or indifferent. We have people of all shapes and sizes getting together and doing their thing. But openly, we're not doing it butt naked. Now, in this audio file, I'm not butt naked. I simply have removed my shirt like most men do when they're hot. I also was told that I smelled, and I can't help that. When you're homeless and you don't get a bath for 30 days, you might produce a long-term odor. It's going to take a while with the Nagjantra soap that I love to buy from one man who makes soap in Indiana that I literally like, and if I say that, someone will go out and buy some and pretend to be me, I'm sure, but I'm just being facetious, right? I mean, nobody does that. Nobody takes on people's identities today. There's no such thing as identity theft. There's no such thing as someone trying to ruin a life by walking in places and claiming to be a person by their name and doing crap on them, or is there? You see, we don't really know what people do is pretty true, but we do have person of interest cameras, and person of interest cameras are supposed to capture the illegals. I purchased almost $1,000 worth of equipment for my last apartment home because someone kept coming into my home. I had three trail cameras. Now I seem to only have two. For some reason, one has gone completely missing from my bag where I put them. And they're simply to be seem to be in another bag where I didn't store them at all. And the reality is I don't like that. And I also purchased a video system to allow myself the opportunity to capture people. What I find is someone has moved things around in my storage and I'm not seeing that video capture system. I spent money on that. Where is it now? I'd like to know. When someone monkeys around in your storage unit, you sort of get pissed off. 
because it's not their property, it's not their lawful right to be there, and frankly, it's illegal, it's immoral, it's illicit. Now, standing here with the shirt off as a man difficult? No. Do I feel a little um, embarrassed or hazukashi when saying Japanese? Sure, a little humbled. But openly, I'm trying to make a point that in life, we have the right to be who we are. We have the right to produce what we want. We have the right to say what we feel. We have the right to do a lot of things as long as it does not impede the rights of another human being with regard to their body, their mind, or their soul. We have a lot of people who are trying to do that today, and that's immoral. It's illegal for sure, but they never really think about what God from heaven is thinking about them. God makes everyone. God produces a body, and sometimes when there's, when there's a defect, we take care of it. When we're allowed to handle our own medical care in our own rights, then we are happy, productive, performing human beings. When other people decide they're going to do something to someone and attack a life, they are doing it illegally. They're doing it against federal laws that protects our right to our bodies, to the privacy of our genitalia, and frankly, to every other aspect of our life. Federal law is in play at all times if we're an American citizen. And if we're not, it's definitely in play. The reality is there are international human rights laws that also apply to our lives because we are one of the 400-some countries that put that human rights declaration together. We signed that treaty, or whatever it was, in the United Nations and NATO and whatnot, where those things are in place. Civil rights also allow us freedom of movement and freedom of mobility, and I talk about these things because people seem to have forgotten that information. The technology today is actually utilized to track where we are by people who have the right and people who don't. Parents put trackers on their children and their phones just in case they get into an emergency, just in case their cell dies, just in case whatever, to make sure the kid is not lying to them, which is important, which means they might have struggled in parenting and getting them to understand how truth is so vital today in life. But what I'd like to talk about today as I'm standing here with no shirt on and all furriness is whether or not someone literally has the right to put a tracker on a human being. We've seen some movies of late that talk a little bit about that, and our cell phones allow us to be tracked. When we drive somewhere, someone who has a higher authority in their minds might actually follow our cell phone based on the towers, based on plugging into a system that they have literally access to. Whether or not they have the lawful right to do it is a little hard to be seen, or a little bit outside of our regular knowledge as human beings who are traveling in public in a private setting of our vehicle or simply walking through a store. What I'm literally talking about is, is someone in the world able to put a tracker on a human being? They chip animals, they chip cats, they chip dogs. I think they chip, chip cats. I don't know. I don't have a cat. I'm allergic. But my point is that I know they chip dogs. So are they chipping people? Is a sheriff in the land, is someone in law enforcement, is someone in medical health, and someone in a physician's office chipping people? Long ago, I had to have a nape on my neck checked out. That was the only time that I allowed a needle to be put into my body that was unusual for me. In other cases of medications and prescriptions, I've had to have a nurse give me a shot. I didn't want that shot. It ruined my life. It made me absolutely miserable. It ruined my chemistry in my body, but someone required me to do it. I didn't like it. And I didn't have the right to fight in that moment because I was given a poor attorney. Again, a public pretender, not a public defender. Now, in those moments of time, I can render that opinion because of what happened to me since then, that my life has been utterly, totally destroyed by people who thought they had the right to keep monkeying around in my business, monkeying around in my life, monkeying around in my body, monkeying around in my files, monkeying around in my computers, monkeying around in my property. Those are all federal law violations, totally, completely federal law violations. But where are the federal agents that we can call up and say, look, this is going on for me. What should I do? How can I handle it? What can you do to help me? I'd like to know. When I looked up some government agencies in the phone book the other day, there was no addresses. You literally can't mail something very easily without getting online, which means what? You have a public signature. You now have a public signature. Even if you go to a public computer, especially libraries, you have a public signature. And there's some librarian at the end of the road monitoring who people are, what they're doing, and pretty much can get on onto what you're doing, I'm pretty sure. They are also connected oftentimes to local law enforcement because they are community public servants. Now, when we think about that, it means our tax paying dollars and the taxes we pay at stores and other places and restaurants, I'm presuming, are paying for their jobs, which means they should really be in customer service mode all the time. Politeness is important. Stiffness and strictness is sometimes important, but not regularly. Mostly, they need to have better social skills, and I doubt they have a lot of free time is not true. The question is, who do they openly hang out with? 
other law enforcement, which literally means they all have the same sort of mentality, doesn't it? I mean, we tend to group ourselves and hang out with those folks that we normally associate with, right? But if we lose an association, what happens to us? We go through loss. We go through feeling of hurt. We go through feelings of rejection. We go through feelings of, why did this need to come to this particular state? Why couldn't we just fix all this? Why couldn't we just say, hey, I'm sorry, let's start over. Let's have forgiveness here. Let's have peace in our relationship. Those are things I don't quite grasp of why people do all this talk to the hand stuff and use text messaging to tell people off or write people Dear John letters or whatever the heck people do, but it's not right. People should be willing, if they went that far in relationship, to talk about the most intimate of details of their lives, their children, their sex lives, or whatever, they should be willing to sit down over coffee, over a meal preferred, and literally spend the evening talking about things, regrouping, talking about their side, talking about the other side, trying to find a balance in the middle, and say, hey, let's just go forward. Life has moved on. I'm in a different place. You're in a different place. Let's take care of this now. Let's really take care of this because love is what matters in this world. Now, when I mention love, I get back to the original topic at hand that we have our own bodies and we have the rights to our own bodies. And no one, no physician, no one else should have the right to require us to do something. That is a part of mental health law. That is a part of federal law with regard to our rights to evaluate physicians and decide literally whether or not we want a particular physician to give us care. I've gone into these situations where I've gone to a free appointment, which I thought was great, a meet and greet of the uh, physicians to say, look, this is what I'm needing help with. This is what I'm needing you to care for. And I literally waited time to do that, went in and did that with a new physician, and he said he could help me. Then sure enough, a little bit later, he started to talk to people probably and started to feel weird about it, and then basically made me go off to get other physician work. I didn't appreciate that. That was a total waste of my life. I had to wait another four months to handle all that stuff, and it was ridiculous. That woman had no skill set in my particular condition, and openly, she should have never been allowed to make one comment in my file. When I took it to her, her superior, she that superior promised that my file would be adjusted. Did she do it? Nope, she didn't. She lied about it. We talked for two hours on the telephone, or at least supposedly we did, unless she had someone else call me who was in their legal counsel, but openly it wasn't their lawful right to monkey with my records and interfere with my long-term medical care. That's what I'm saying. Now I'm a little itchy because, you know, that's what happens when you take your clothes off. You start to feel those little ticks and, and things in your body that are like, hey, you missed a spot or whatever. But the bottom line is that when we have a right to our own life, we have the right to produce our own life, we have the right to produce our own videos, we have the right to not be edited, we have the right to have our own computers being left alone by people who think they're just having a gay old time taking our photographs. So here I am, standing in all buriness, all furriness, if you will, all buriness, as my friends often say, and my students and some of the Japanese children who are two and three would come up and actually stroke my arms because they weren't accustomed to seeing so much hair. Most Japanese people aren't that furry. But the reality is I've inherited things from my father. I'm pleased about that. I love my dad very much. And I love the fact that he loved me just as I am. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And how we do that is we make sure that we're not monkeying around in a person's rights to their human life, their actual human rights in this world. And one of the human rights of the 27 or so declarations of human rights is a person has a right to choose their own physician, they have the right to choose who they're going to assembly with, and they have the right to move through their community without being mobbed or monsterized by any militia. That's it. That's my message. I hope you get it. Thanks for listening.